Well, hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Jolly Lunatic. And today, we're going to be talking about the environmental biology of pipe smoking and tobacco. No, I'm not really going to do that. But, uh, yeah, something I'm going to talk about. And, uh, having a polliner rattler, grapefruit rattler. Exploring this uh, cytochrome, cytochrome P450 and the potentials of that. No, I just like German beer, and I'm worried. Uh, there seems to be a shortage of that. Uh, might have to do something about that. So I don't know. I know Germany has a beer lovers party, but we, America might be we need one too. But uh, I'm not going to talk about beer. I'm talk about smoking and tobacco and to start it off with uh, I wanted to use this quote from Proverbs 25 28 a man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls and uh, I think uh, to understand the environmental biology and uh, the role of tobacco and pipe smoking and human uh, civilization and yeah uh, you need to understand it in terms of that. Um, that's not to say like if you can't control tobacco, you're like a city that's uh, vulnerable or whatever like that. But uh, yeah, something to that too. But I also that uh, says something about uh, man's self-sufficiency, and I think that's what this really gets to the heart of. And uh, so I'm gonna read some other quotes too and kind of set the mood. This is from uh, Christian Rash's uh, Encyclopedia of Psychoactive Plants. I think from the tr German translations from 2005. I think the original book was published in 1998. And says, okay, and, and he goes through uh, snuffs and smoking mixtures and pretty much everything you can name in here. But here's from the section on tobacco. And this is from Ovre Richter Frick and uh, 1936. In many ways, the history of tobacco is as gripping as any novel. The detective of science has had to make use of all the acumen to illuminate all the botanical, national, economic, and even linguistic problems that surround this mystical plant, which has complete, completed its triumphant march across the entire globe in the course of the past four centuries. And uh, and, and that's something interesting too, That I, um, to get sidetracked here, um, why I've always kind of encouraged pipe smokers to get into growing tobacco is to explore this uh, rapid evolution that um, plants seem to do. Um, and I don't know whether it's through just interaction with the individual that's growing it or or what's happening, but uh, I'm sure you can even find this with clones of plants that like you'll find chemical and uh, different uh, morphological variations um, even amongst the same genus. And I, it has to be through interaction between um, the, the cultivar and the cultivator. And uh, so let's go on here and found another quote. This is, uh, I think this is from the Lakandong Indians, if I'm not mis mistaken. Many Amazonians believe that there's a mighty life-giving and life-preserving power in tobacco. It also it is also believed that tobacco can strengthen the ability to resist harmful influences, purity, purify, and enlighten. As a vehicle of the shaman, tobacco promotes contact with supernatural beings. The expelled smoke forms a kind of ladder to the heavens and is a medium through which religious authority, authorities receive their energy. Few healing ceremonies occur in which tobacco smoke is not blown or tobacco leaves laid down. An ailing person must also ingest great quantities of tobacco so that the power of such an immunization can defend against the renewed attacks of disease demons. Let's see. And here's a, another, no, that was from Wolfgang Muller, uh, 1995, on the Amazonian Indians. And this quote's from Julie, Julius Lippert, 1885. Never has a plant that has entered into the circle of culture been laden with such curses or been persecuted with such severe laws as tobacco, and never has one passed so triumphantly across the entire earth evidence as to how much humans have always been and still are inclined to pursue to pursue the enticements of pleasure more quickly than the demands of social welfare 
And one final quote from this book. Um, uh, it, he goes through the ritual use, and, and I'd like to talk more about that. I'm trying to condense this, make it as quick as possible. Hachakayum, our true lord, th this is the Lakadon quote. Um, Hachakayum, our true lord, made tobacco. He planted it, he tried it out. Ah, it is very delicious. That is very good for my creatures, for its smoke dispels us, dispels the flies, its juice kills the ticks and the flesh worms. Hachakayum gave tobacco to the ancestors, but they did not need to die, for they did not inhale the smoke. When you inhale the smoke, your consciousness turns, the heart beats faster, the stomach aches. When you inhale the smoke, you quickly, quickly become inebriated, you must vomit, the muscles ache, then you must drink a lot of water or pour it over your head, then you will become healthy once more. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, great resource on tobacco for anybody who's interested in that, that encyclopedia of psychoactive plants. And uh, for anybody who's interested in actual herbalism, um, I think this is from 2004. Um, it's the PDR of Herbal Medicine, third edition. I don't know if they've done an updated edition since then. Uh, there have been many new discoveries that probably need to be addressed, but it's not in here. And uh, so here, we'll just go through uh, indications and usages. So here we go. It's on page 825 on tobacco. And uh, let's see. Well, let's just go. We'll start with the effects. In small doses, tobacco increases blood pressure and the activity of gastric mucous membrane. In larger larger doses, it reduces blood pressure and lowers muscle tone of the gastrointestinal tract. Tobacco is a stimulant to the respiratory and central nervous system. And indications and uses, unproven uses. Nicotine is used to help break the smoking habit. And then Apache Indians use the drug to treat toothache, mosquito bites, and bee stings. Uh, snake bites too, uh, the Christian Rash books gets into that. In Brazil and Guyana, tobacco is used for worm infestation, skin parasites, and biliary flow disturbances. The drug's use in these conditions is not advised because of risk of toxicity. And then in uh, Indian medicine, I'm guessing that means India, uh, tobacco is used for toothache, dental caries, earaches, separating rhinitis, I'm guessing that's a runny nose, hernias, and painful swellings. And then let's see here. And this is about overdosages. The lethal dosage for nicotine for an adult is 40 to 100 milligrams, although this can be considerably elevated through habituation. With tobacco, with smoking tobacco, two to seven grams of the drug, once cigarette, one cigarette contains 10 milligrams of nicotine, of which one to two milligrams are inhaled during smoking. Symptoms of an acute poisoning include dizziness, salivation, vomiting, diarrhea, trembling of the hands, feelings of weakness in the legs. Very high dosage can lead to rapidly lead rapidly to spasms, unconsciousness, cardiac arrest, and respiratory failure. Poisonings occur in particular through ingestion of cigarettes by children and handling of insecticides containing nicotine. And in connection with the harvesting of tobacco, also through cutaneous reabsorption. Um, nicotine patches also represent a danger for children. So, anyway, uh, you know, why would, uh, why would this really toxic poisonous plant become so important to Native Americans. Well, without modern medicine, uh, without all that kind of stuff, I think it's easy to understand why toxic drugs were used because that's kind of the, the rule of thumb in traditional medicine, uh, whether it's uh, Hippocrates in Greece or tr in traditional Chinese medicine or Ay Ayurvedic medicine. You have a principle, a basic rule of thumb, whereas you use the least toxic drugs for minor acute conditions and you use more toxic drugs for chronic and more severe conditions and you use the most toxic drugs as a last resort in the real severe cases. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a, what is it, Paracelsus's rule, you know, that the only thing that um, distinguishes a food, drug, and a poison is the dose. But, um, so th that's a variable in, in all this too. But, they're also finding out that you know most modern drugs are working through what's called a, a hormesis type effect where it's actually causing damage to the body and that's stimulating the immune response that's actually aiding in the healing and that may be going on with a lot of drugs that 
um, are used. And it, it may just be a basic principle of biology that once you, you know, that if you think of the human being as like a, homeo uh, a homeostatic mechanism, like a, um, like a thermostat, you know, you, you push it one way and then it springs back and it goes the other way. And, uh, and I think that that's kind of what's happening is like you have a, a disease that's causing disharmony in the body. And so the idea behind this traditional medicine thing is that you use something toxic to counteract that effect and shift it the other way and to achieve balance again. And, uh, so I think, uh, with native Americans specifically, because they're having to travel, um, you know, from what we understand about anthropology, that they had to come across the land bridge. And I think that that's something interesting that, you know, they're kind of like the native Americans were possibly the first immigrants. Now, a lot of them wouldn't say that they'd say that, you know, they came from the mother earth and were spawned here in America according to their own traditional mythologies. And I'm not going to try to dispute that. And, and actually, there's actually some evidence for um, humans maybe starting in the Americas or be, the beginning of human human beings starting in the Americas. Uh, I think Graham Hancock's gotten into this a little bit. But uh, uh, if, if we take the theory on its face value that, you know, these are um, people from Eurasia and Siberia, Mongolia, Turkic areas, um, that they would have had to have dealt with a completely different environment, you know, and, and some of the plants, you know, they would have recognized and some of them would have been the same as what they're used to, but a lot of them would have been different. And, uh, morphology isn't always the best way to, you know, determine what these things, their properties are. So like, just because a plant looks like something else doesn't mean it's necessarily related. Doesn't mean it has the same compounds. So, Native Americans in this new wilderness of the Americas had to carve out a niche and, and start from scratch and uh, establish what was a toxic food, what was a medicine. And I think smoking, uh, smoking, well, smoking of the pipe eventually, but smoking plants and burning plants started out as being their way of navigating that unknown territory. Um, and the reason for that is. Um, that oh, just kind of like the same thing that smoking and inhaling tobacco is stronger than chewing tobacco, um, in, in some ways, um, and that the effects come on faster, they leave faster, and uh, they. But, but the thing is, with, with chewing it, you might overdo it, and so I, I don't know how many other how many people started out chewing tobacco and Boy Scouts or as adolescents, but usually that's the first experience is, you know, they end up swallowing the tobacco instead of spitting it out or what have you, and you end up having the poisonous symptoms that the PDR described. But, uh, and so that kind of shows you why you'd want to, you're less apt to have um, a lot of those poisonous symptoms from just smoking a little bit of tobacco. And, and so like, that's kind of, a way of understanding this that there are many drugs where you can understand their effects quicker through smoking them than by ingesting them which and, and sometimes ingesting them may be poisonous uh, sometimes um, the act of burning itself can like um, destroy some more other uh, more compounds within these plants that are cardiac glycosides and even more dangerous than some of the sought-after alkaloids so, yeah, I think a good way to look at the pipe is like it was primordial man's uh, microscope into the uh, f the flora around him, and uh, as a as a way of like determining you know what was safe to eat. And so you know as a result, then you have Native Americans using solanaceous plants other than tobacco. So the tomatoes, you know, a lot of these peppers, things like that, end up. Uh, becoming dietary things and it had to be a pretty brave individual that discovered this and and how they actually went about testing these plants I, I think I think smoking and fire probably does hold the key to like understanding that and uh, and and with beans and legumes too I mean and the first some of the oldest pipes that they found I think were in South America and uh, they had burned uh, 
Yopo seeds in them, which is a Fabaceae pea family, I think, plant. And so they're already testing that out uh, at a very early date, even before they were using tobacco, it seems like. And um, so I think, you know, whether you're dealing with the disease or you know th these kind of situations that medicine men back then would have had to deal with it is almost like a war type situation and so i think that that was how this played a role that it was this comforting agent that helped people out and uh got them through tough times and uh maybe even you know helped them you know survive through uh snake bites bee stings all kinds of different uh uh, maybe poisonings or worm infestations like they say and uh, so you can see why this, this this practice stayed alive through for thousands of years you know that, that they had to the smoking a pipe ended up kind of uh, symbolizing that conquest of the Americas and uh, it is interesting too that uh, when uh, soldiers in World War II were, were fighting in the trenches um, that tobacco ended up being such a great comfort for them and I think that there's something in the memory of tobacco of, of the um, just being out of your territory and, and, and using it as a aid of protection to navigate your territory and you know that takes many forms whether they're using it as medicine or for injuries or bee stings or um, maybe burning it to purify houses to get rid of stagnant air or infected air or, um, you know that was that was another use for it and who, who knows what you know science may be laden in that um, but another thing too just uh, for the in Native Americans that weren't hunter gatherers um, you know using it as a as a pesticide in agriculture so it has many 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 uses but i i, I, th I want to emphasize that the environment the environmental biology of the pipe is as this um, microscope into the floral uh, flora and fauna around you and um almost is like a primordial uh what do they call it uh, uh, mass spectrometer something like that and uh, it was a way for natives Native Americans to test out plants and uh, find out which ones are poisonous and which ones weren't and uh, which ones are valuable and and so yeah a little bit of this I've gotten into um, when I did my interview with uh, Kane Rob Piper but uh, yeah I don't I don't know I was just trying to condense this and maybe make it a little bit more accessible so uh, if you're ever wondering, like, you know, why this pipe smoking thing is, is such a, um, a common thing amongst uh, Native Americans, these, this uh, tribe of people that came out of Asia and had to enter this new land, or whether uh, there's soldiers fighting in the trenches, and, or, or even uh, first-generation immigrants coming into America. I found out that they're prolific smokers as well, and I wonder how much of that's playing a role into it. But that gets into the environmental psychology of it, and uh, yeah, if you're going to take a Freudian take, you might as well just uh, listen to Norm MacDonald's oral fixation jokes, because uh, you can't do better than that. But uh, I think there is room for like maybe a Jungian interpretation of the environmental psychology of pipe smoking. Uh, something about the hearth and home and the hand axe and uh, you know the pipe being kind of like a hollowed out hand axe. Uh, hearth and home symbolizing safety, security, that kind of thing. So I think, th I think there's potential for that. I'd love to work with somebody on that. Uh, I actually have a lot to say about that, but in uh, lieu of time and keep things close or short and neat and uh, we'll just close it here. So y'all take care. I hope you enjoyed this. hope it gave you something to think about. Um, much more I could go into about this, but like I said, I'm just trying to keep this short. We've already gone on too long. Y'all take care. Godspeed.